Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and many of you have been asking me to take a look at the Surface Laptop 2, and since I already did the Surface Pro 6, I thought we'd take a look at this now. Now, this has been out for a couple months, and the good news is you can get this for a reduced price of about $300 off. So they currently go from $799 to $2,399, and that's for a top model of a, with a Core i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a terabyte of storage. This one is $999, so let me flip it over, I'll show you what comes in the box and what specs we've got. So you can see in the top there, it's got the 8th gen Core i5 quad core processor, 256 gigabytes SSD and eight gigabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and open this up. We'll get it set up, see what comes with it, and then uh, move on to setting it up and seeing what it will do as far as its benchmarks go. So we'll go ahead and open this up. There we go. Let's set this aside. And here's the Surface Laptop. Now this is the new color for this year. It's in black. And we'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. Now in the box, we've got a little documentation it looks like. And no stickers. But it talks about caring for the Surface Laptop. Let's move this aside and take a look at the power adapter that we've got. So here's the power adapter. We've got an extra USB plug in it and then our wall adapter. And then you can see the magnetic connector there. And this is something I wish Apple would bring back, but they won't. And this is uh, really nice to have. So here is the Surface laptop. Let's go ahead and open it up. There we go. And you can see it looks just like last year's model. It's aluminum on both top and bottom. And then let's go ahead and flip it over and it picks up fingerprints really easy, but it still looks nice. And then on this side, you can see we have USB-A, display port, microphone jack, no USB-C, and then we've got our surface connector here. So it's pretty nice, just like last year's, but it doesn't have the modern adapters. You can get a USB-C adapter pretty inexpensively on Amazon to USB-A. So we'll open it up and this is Alcantara, although it doesn't feel like Alcantara that you get on some of the other Surface devices. So it's hard to say if this is actually what that is, but it looks pretty good. You've got a nice glass trackpad and a really great keyboard since they've kept the same one from last year. Let's go ahead and turn it on and get it set up. Now the keyboard has great throw to it. it looks really nice it feels good then the trackpad is nice it's glass and it clicks on the bottom you can't click on the top and the overall build of this is really nice it's very sturdy and feels very high quality you can see the screen is quite reflective but these are really nice displays let's go ahead and turn this on wait for it to boot up and then we'll get it set up. So you'll see it says continue in selected language. We'll click yes. Hi there, I'm Cortana and I'm here to help. A little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi. And we'll be able to set this up with our voice, so I'll do that. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way. And if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom of your screen. If you need an assistive screen reader, press the Windows, Control, and Enter keys at the same time to turn on Narrator. Okay, enough intro. Let's dig in. Now one thing to... Your region is set to the United States. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Your keyboard is set to U.S. Want to stick with that? Yes. Do you also type with another keyboard layout? No. Now let's get you connected to a network. That way you can get updates, apps, and cat videos as soon as possible. Now one thing to note is the speakers are under this keyboard and they're vibrating something. You can hear that a little bit. But let me go ahead and put in my password and we'll get to the next step. We'll click next and... Now we have some important setup to do. Next up, the legal stuff. In short, 
you'll need to select accept to use windows you can decline we'll click accept move on to the next step you have to do that physically you can't do that with your voice for at least i haven't been able to type your email address or phone number then follow the instructions to sign in i'll catch up with you once that's done so i'll put in my credentials and then click next use windows hello to unlock your pc quick as a wink with just your face no wink required want to set that up now yes okay hold still for a second we need to learn to recognize you want to set up a pin if you've never used Windows Hello, it's like Face ID for your laptop. It's definitely the best way to log in out there. Now let's link your phone and PC using a Microsoft app that can work some magic between your devices. We'll send you a text to get everything set up. Just type your phone number and press send. And I'll do this later. I don't want to do that now. Let's move on to the next step. Want to automatically save files and photos to OneDrive for some added peace of mind? Yes. Your PC comes with a free 30-day trial of Office 360. Click yes. Hey, look, that's me, Cortana. Can I have permission to use the info I need to do my best work? Yes. These are the settings Microsoft recommends. Go ahead and review them and select accept when you're ready. So everything looks good here. We'll just tap on accept. Almost done now. We just need to get a few more things polished up for you and windows will be all yours. Looking forward to helping out. There we go. So it's set up and it's going to load the desktop. We'll wait a few minutes and we should be at the desktop and then we'll take a look at some of the benchmarks and see how this compares. Now this should be faster than the MacBook pro without the touch bar, which is similarly priced or even the MacBook Air. So this should be a better deal, but you're lacking those Thunderbolt ports that you have on the MacBook. But either way, this is a great value for $999, but just keep in mind you can't upgrade this. So there's no way to actually change the RAM or the storage later on, and it's not upgradable. Like the Surface Pro, you have the micro SD slot. On this, you don't. So we're at the desktop, that was pretty quick. Let's go ahead and close this and let's turn up the brightness a little bit. This goes pretty bright. Now, if you've never seen one of these displays, this is really nice. It's 13.5 inches corner to corner, 2256 by 1504 with 201 pixels per inch. There we go. It's customizing to how I have my PC set up and it's just a really nice Beautiful screen, touch screen, but it is a little bit reflective if I had one complaint about it. But overall, it's a great display. So you'll see it comes installed with Microsoft Edge. That's going to be discontinued soon, or at least revamped to use the Chromium engine from Chrome. But let's get some apps installed. I'll make sure this is updated, and then I'll run some benchmarks. So I'll check for updates. and see what we've got. It's probably going to take a while to update. And currently I have about 47% battery. These easily get you through a day if you haven't used one of these. And you'll see there are a ton of updates. So I'll get this updated and then I'll move on from there and see what it's like to use and benchmark it. Now it's been quite a while and I installed all the updates that this had available for it. That took quite a few hours and then I installed some benchmarks and some other things. So let's take a look at the Geekbench. I ran this already and you'll see we came in at 3,349 for a single core and 10,933 for multi-core score. And this is pretty good, it's okay, but the main thing holding this back is its graphics card. And the graphics card in this is an Intel UHD graphics 620. The processor itself is actually pretty good. So let me go ahead and close that. And you'll see I have Cinebench open here. And I also have Intel's power gadget just to see if it throttles. Now, so far I haven't seen throttling during tasks. So its base clock speed is about 1.8 gigahertz or so. And it only runs at about 2.1. It doesn't really get to its base clock speed. So let's go ahead and hit run. For the CPU test, we'll see if it throttles at all. It may, but it does have a fan inside as well. So let's wait for this to finish and see what we get.
Now it completed with 476 for CPU. That's not great, but it's not horrible either. But let's go ahead and run the OpenGL test. And also I never saw it throttle. It ran at about 2.3 gigahertz the whole time. So let's go ahead and hit run. And if you look down here, there's GPU utilization and it's doing pretty good as far as the overall temperature. It's not warm or anything like that. Even if you touch it here on the underside, it may get a little bit warm. So let's wait for this to run and see how it does. Now, at first, when this started to run, it actually throttled a little bit, but then I noticed the CPU utilization is way down. So it's actually not throttling. It's just not using a lot of its power. So we'll wait for this. It's hanging out about 50 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty cold, actually. Not bad at all. The OpenGL test completed and it completed at 36.73 frames per second, if you can see up there. And that's pretty good. That's actually better than some others that I've tested, MacBooks and things. And again, the temperature never really went over 50 degrees Celsius. It's gone back down to 44 degrees Celsius. So let me close that. And then we're going to try the Heaven benchmark, which is more of a gaming benchmark. And then we'll try a game that everyone's going to ask me if it runs anyway. We'll try out Fortnite and just see what it runs at. So we'll click run here. I'll leave everything at default for now. Everything is on high and we'll click run and see what heaven benchmark does. So right now on its default settings, I didn't change anything. We're running at about five frames per second in the upper right there. So not so great. Normally when we get to the part where there's the airship, it goes up a little bit and we're at about eight frames per second, six to eight. It depends on what it's doing. So not so great there. And I wouldn't expect it to be very good at this. This is not really meant for gaming. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. Let quit. Now, because many of you will ask anyway, we'll go ahead and open Fortnite. Now, keep in mind, this has not gone above 50 degrees Celsius. That's really impressive. I don't hear any fans or anything. It's staying nice and cool. So let's see if it runs this, what kind of frames per second we get. I'll let it kind of run itself as far as what it can handle. And hopefully we get okay benchmarks. So I haven't opened this before. It just finished installing a little while ago and let's see how it does. You'll see it's fully loaded, at least in the lobby. And by default, it set everything to medium and we're running at about 20 frames per second. So let me go ahead and hit play, see what it does. I may have to lower it down to low just to get decent frame rates out of it. Also, while we're waiting for it to do matchmaking, GPU utilization is usually around 94% here and I'm starting to hear the fan spin up. So there's that. And also it's running at about 2.4 gigahertz right now at 43% utilization. So it's doing okay. As far as the CPU is concerned, you can see it's quite choppy right now and it's not really doing so well as far as the frame rate is concerned. Let me change some of the settings quick. This is much more playable, although still kind of choppy. You're actually better off playing it on your phone probably for frame rate. And if you want a little higher resolution, it seems like it works, but uh, it's not so great. So it's playable, but it's, it's not anything that I would recommend when you're, when you're playing this, it seems like it's going to be okay in low resolution or low mode, uh, but overall it's not going to be great. And I'm terrible at this game. So uh, let's move on to the next thing. Now, as I said, during that Fortnite test, it actually spun the fan up for the first time. Although we're only at about 53 degrees Celsius and it's coming down now. And you can see it actually thermal throttled a little bit. Once we got to that full CPU utilization and GPU utilization, it pulled back the frequency a little bit. For the most part though, it did really well. And then the other thing with this is something I actually miss when I'm using a Mac is the touch screen. The touch screen is super responsive and it's great to be able to, to just use this as something that you have in addition to whatever you're doing. So if you want to open up Chrome, go to my website here and let me move this out of the way, go to my website and it's nice and fast, but we can scroll through this. And this is really a productivity machine. Uh, just, just size things. It's great for productivity. Maybe you need to administer some servers, maybe get some schoolwork done with word, things like that. 
you're not going to have any problems as far as those tasks go. However, if you want something for gaming, uh, I would highly recommend taking a look at something like the Surface Book 2 or maybe even something from Razer. Now, I'm not so sure that this is actually Alcantara. I guess it could be, but it doesn't feel like the Alcantara of the other colors that they have available. So there's something different with the black color and the device itself just feels great. It, just like last year's, it's super high quality build. I used one for an entire year, the previous version, and liked it a lot to administer some servers and things like that. It was great for remoting into servers, running a bunch of tabs, having a ton of things open at once. Even with eight gigs of RAM, it seems to handle it just fine. And then you get all the updates for Surface, and it was rock solid. The main limitation is really the ports on the side. Although if you use this with a dock, that's what I did most of the time with a monitor, it was great. And then over here, you only have one USB-A and the headphone, but that usually works for most of the things you're going to do. And if you use a dock, you're good to go. But if you want to edit video, or you want to do something like maybe game on it, you may want to look elsewhere or get a Surface Book 2 or maybe a Razer or something along those lines to get you by a little bit faster. But when it comes to trackpads and the touchscreen and the keyboard, this is a really solid package that I could highly recommend to most people wanting a productivity machine. Now, additionally, if you are someone that wants to use a pen, it's not really easy to use a pen on this display, although the Surface Pen will work, as well as the Surface Dial next to it. Uh, but I found over the year of using the previous version, I never used the pen just because it was awkward to use on this display. It's better for a tablet style like it, the Surface Pro or the Surface Go. Now, if you haven't seen my Surface Pro 6 video, this is going to have the same internals and be capable of the same thing. And there's also the Surface Go, but I don't normally recommend that unless you want to do really light work. But let me know your thoughts about the Surface Laptop 2 in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.